Hi guys and welcome to Mentimi's YouTube channel. My name is Alan Arunjan. I'm a CFA charter holder and you are basically landed up in the part two of the equity research tutorial series. And in today's session, we'll be covering on accounting forensics. Basically, what that actually means is to find out the crook, right? Because there are about 2,400 stocks listed in the Indian stock exchange like NSC and BSC. But uh, it's very difficult to find out which company is actually not uh, trying to loot your money right because there are a lot of cases where company will companies will actually use a lot of something techniques to show you the correct picture right so how do you actually find out that's what i'm going to be covering in this session so i'll see you in the class bye, -bye. okay so remember i spoke about you know, not just the assumption research, but also obviously running a forensic check, check uh, to filter out companies, right? Because if you even look at the Indian stock market, you know, and you look at NSC, there are about 2,400 to 3,000 stocks, uh, you know, which are available. So how do you actually come down to, you know, selecting a company which probably deserves your attention to further investigate or probably understand or even make a financial model for it, right? So I've given a certain checks, you know, which you can actually run on any of these websites, which will give you, uh, you know, for example, screener.in gives you this option to put all these checks and you can get the list of companies which fit the criteria, right? And also, even if let's say you started researching on any company, maybe you are working for a research or a broker and, uh, you know, you are uh, given the task of making a financial model for that company, these forensics might be very very helpful right and it also will help you in uh, you know finding out the crook because majorly if a company has to perform you know first is to remove the crook so once the crook is gone then you have you know some legitimate businesses that you can actually look to and you can believe them just to give you a statistic here uh, you know you might find this as very intriguing is the fact that out of those 4,000, 3,000 stocks that I spoke about in India specifically, there are only 40 companies which will pass this checklist. And in terms of the profitability of the entire economy, you would be surprised to know that 80% of the profits in India actually is just uh, generated by around 10 to 12 companies. Right. So there is a reason why this happens because uh, mostly you know, when, you're, when you remove the crook out of it, then all the remaining businesses which are able to generate a return on capital of greater than 15% is only possible if you are first of all doing the right thing. And second of all is if you have certain game plans or moat in the company, some form of advantage that the other companies and other competitors are not able to do, right? While we go through the Titan model, you will also realize why I have chosen Titan because it fits all of these criteria, right? And that obviously is pretty pleasing when you're actually making a financial model. So first of all, the first filter is the cash flow versus EBITDA, right? So operating cash flow divided by EBITDA and you're trying to look at a figure of somewhere around 72% or anything about 50% is also pretty appreciable, but 70% would be the highest mark of quality. If a company has a lot of EBITDA, but its operating cash flow is low, what that actually means is it's just booked revenue, right? Because to recognize revenue in the income statement, you don't really need cash, right? So you just need receivables, right? You just need invoices, right? But at the same time, if that invoices are not turning into cash or it is taking too long, that means the company will be in a cash crunch and it will obviously if it has to maintain you know paying their employees and paying for all the expenses it will go to the bank and when it will go to the bank since it has a very you know tight working capital structure the bank will charge them higher interest rate and when they're charging higher interest rate you're basically reducing or probably increasing the risk of the company and also indirectly increasing the overall cost of capital right so Again, even if your receivables are there, you need to understand if the receivables are increasing for the company, is the company doing provisions for it? 
right? Because undoubtedly there will be a lot of debtors who will end up not paying you. Right? It's not possible that the company has so many receivables and there is no no one who is defaulting on it. If the company is not doing any provisions, provisioning basically means that we are estimating that okay, five percent of these receivables are never going to get uh, you know received, and hence we book a loss in our income statement, right? Which is done in advance, right? If there is no provisioning, you can very well assume that this money is never going to come, and that's the first sign of a crook, and it's uh, you know there's probably not much of investigation which is required. Uh, its reputation will precede its data, right? So now the third is the sudden increase or decrease in other income. You know we do not expect a company to generate a lot of money from other sources, right? Secondary sources, because uh, if let's say Titan is in the business of selling jewelry, right? We expect it to generate majority of the money from jewelry. We are not really thrilled when we look at you know a high percentage of money coming from other income. And other income divided by the total cash and cash equivalent should be somewhere around six to seven percent in India. If we're looking at US, then you're looking at around two to three percent, right? Any number which is higher or lower than this means probably that cash is not there, right? Specifically, especially if it is lower than six to seven percent, it means that that cash is actually not there because even a uh, any Tom who does not know anything about investments. And he's you know investing in a fixed deposit would probably generate around six to seven percent in India, right? Sudden decrease in cost compared to the competitors. There was a very famous IBM case in which uh, you know IBM's SG&A had significantly reduced uh, between two periods because you have to understand the mentality of the company. Every analyst, every investor is basically following one thing quarter on quarter, which is the earning per share. Now, if you are looking at the earning per share, invariably you are looking at the income statement, right? So, obviously, even the best of the best company is not going to make the mistake of making its income statement look bad. So that means the management and the CEO's direct interest, you know, is in making sure that the stock price remains stable. That is more true with senior management because their compensation is also linked linked with stock options. So if the company's stock price is not working well, so is their compensation not working well, right? So in the IBM case, there was a, a trick which was used in which in the selling journal and admin expenses they had reclassified certain expenses, and which basically was you know making it look as if the gross profit margins have. Uh, or the EBITDA margins have increased significantly. Right? You can Google it out on the IBM SG&A manipulation, and you should be able to get the case. Right? Changes in revenue recognition principles. Right? So if you have learned about revenue recognition principles, you know there are various methods. Right? One is let's say if you are looking at a construction company, then we are looking at percentage completion method. If we are looking at let's say uh, you know a more uh, non-aggressive method, then you're looking at a completed contract method. So any changes in the revenue recognition principle suddenly by a company is a red flag because uh, the company should be spending more time in generating that revenue rather than changing the principles to make it look good. And specifically when it's trying to get into more aggressive methods, right? Related party transactions are very, very serious. Because sometimes what the company can actually do is company can acquire a company which itself becomes the customer or client, right? And which helps in them in probably manipulating the cost. So if let's say it's a client, then you might, you know, get into a structure wherein the cost of goods sold is charged lower for your acquired company. Or if it's a customer, then you might try to sell it at a higher rate just to manage the financial statements. Changing changes in the auditors frequently you want to look at stability in financial auditing right so specifically you do not want the auditors to be changing so frequently and their fees also being significantly higher right because that's a red flag there's no reason for it right uh, also the reputation of the auditors should be checked you know whether the company is you know if the company is big enough uh, obviously it should have a bigger auditor right 
the audit committee i always uh, you know at any annual report try to see who is the chairperson for the audit committee because the audit committee should be independent right and if you actually find any of your chairman md or you know ex directors being the chairman of the audit committee that's a red flag because there's a huge influence on how that auditing will actually happen right frequent goodwill impairments you know if the company is having a lot of uh, goodwill impairments that you can see which means that the company is actually paying too much money when they are trying to acquire you know let's say a third party company right because impairment is generally when the value of an item or an asset or an acquisition right falls in the market in terms of its value and that happens during auditing but the balance sheet value is higher so in order to get the balance sheet value to the real value of the market you would take an impairment loss so it's not really a good sign when impairments are happening frequently high cvip in case of manufacturing company so cvip is nothing but capital work in progress it's nothing but a subset of gross fixed assets so if let's say i am trying to build a plant which is going to get ready in another 3 years i do not put that directly in gross fixed assets but i actually put it in cvip which is capital work in progress now if the company has a very high value of cvip compared to gross fixed assets uh, you know and and also the revenue and the general economy is giving you a sign that there was actually no need to make a plant or to you know construct another capacity it is a clear sign that there is a a lot of money which is not never going to actually come in fact there's a lot of there are a lot of companies across the world which will have a higher proportion of cvip compared to gross fixed assets is not a very good sign uh in terms of forensics right so that's the basic forensics that you're looking at when you're looking at the quality of the company now if you want to summarize this in terms of ratios uh in terms of the quality the growth all these forensics checks will finally you know give you these numbers okay so roc return on capital being greater than 15% over a long time operating cash flow as a percentage of ebda should be greater than 50% you want a lower leverage but we don't we are not really looking at no leverage but we are looking at a debt to equity ratio of less than 2 right? because if a company is generating an roc of 15% and it has an operating cash flow of greater than 50% there will be a very less requirement to take a lot of leverage you know and even if the leverage is there that would be more of working capital leverage short term leverage we are looking at free cash flow growth okay using the free cash flow we are expecting that the company is actually using this cash flow to buy more assets but those assets should generate revenue that is the reason why we are looking at an asset turnover of greater than 1 asset turnover is revenue divided by assets because if the asset turnover is not increasing that means all this you know capex or buying of assets that we are doing using the free cash flow is not finally giving us revenue so what is the company doing right maybe that money is actually getting laundered across right uh, cvip as a percentage of gross fixed asset which i just spoke about in the previous slide should be less than 0.5 okay and the cash conversion cycle should be improving or should be stable okay so we're looking at lower receivables uh, time uh, lower inventory turnover times and we are looking at a if uh, you know a probably a good negotiated payable time that way the company is generating a lot of cash sooner if you run this good indicators believe me uh, you know whatever universe that you are looking at of let's say 5000 companies 3000 companies i am pretty sure that the number that you will get at the end of this will probably shock you right so that's how even titan was filtered and you know basis this forensics checks is where we decided to research this company further in doing the dcf valuation right so that's the end of how to do the forensic search for the company now basis this understanding we'll start making the financial model for titan so i'll see you then